Hello, everybody. It's Professor Fiore, and we're back with some more programming in Python. Today, we're going to look at file access, how we can read and write to and from files. The first thing we have to understand is that when we access a file off disk, we need to have control over who is actually reading from and writing to that file. Usually that's a single owner. We don't want multiple people to be writing to a file at the same time. So we have to have control over that and we have to know, of course, which file that we want access to. So the very first thing we need to do with our file, item number one, is to gain that access, which we do through an open call. Now, once that's done, in other words, once we've gained access to it, we would then read or write to and from the file in pretty much the same way that we would read or write to the console. In other words, you know, we used input statements and uh, print statements to do that. So we had similar kinds of statements to deal with the file. And finally, we need to relinquish our control or access to this. So we need to close the file. Okay. All right. So what do these uh, calls actually look like? Well, uh, the first one open, this is going to return a file object to us. Don't really worry about what that is, but a file object. We have an open call. You can see the hint here. Uh, the first thing we want to put in is the file name. So this is a string, and uh, it would be a fully qualified file file name. Uh, you know, something like uh, g colon slash my file dot dat or you know whatever it was that we were writing to, okay, or reading from. So this would change depending on your particular operating system and you know your particular computer setup and so forth. And then the second thing is we need a mode. So we're either going to do generally R, which is a read mode, or W, which is a write mode. And um, if we're going to write to a file and it doesn't exist, right, that will create the file. If it already exists, it's going to destroy the file and we create a new one. So we're going to have something like this. So, you know, a, a call would look maybe like this. Right? Or we'd have a W in here, or a W plus is another option. But we're going to kind of keep this simple today. Now, the second thing I, I care about is what kind of file are we dealing with? There's broadly speaking, two categories. Um, we can be talking about binary files. These are sometimes referred to as machine readable. And then there are human readable, basically text files. So the, the former is more flexible, perhaps, and certainly a smaller file. Um, of course, the problem is you need another program to actually access, read the file. The other kind, the sort of human readable, all you really need is a, uh, uh, a text editor, right? and you can read the contents to the file. So since this is just sort of an introductory ex exploration, I'm just going to look at that second one. We're going to take a look at... Uh, just reading and, and uh, writing primarily to um, a text file. Okay, now once I get the file object, the file object, because it is an object, has uh, member functions. So one of the ones we would look at, if I wanted to read from the, um, oops, if I want to read from uh, my file once it's been opened, would be something called read or read line. So what this would do is, now that the file has been opened, we think of there being a file pointer, in other words, the current location of where we are in the file. And once we've opened it, that location obviously would be at the very beginning. So when I do a file read line, what I'm going to get is the first text line, and that's going to be returned to us in the form of some kind of string. I'll just call it str here. So I'm going to get a string back from this thing, right? Just a normal string that I can print out. 
I can, you know, if it's numbers, I can turn it into a float or an integer, you know, whatever the heck it is that I'm interested in. The converse of that, right, so the, the read line is kind of like an input statement. The converse of that is a write statement. So we have, again, our file object. And I would pass this a string. Right, so I'd have some kind of string. And if, if I know I'm going to um, have this line oriented, because if I just keep start dumping things out here, it's just going to be one long unbroken line. You know, there aren't going to be any uh, new line characters. What I might want to do here is concatenate a, uh, oops, concatenate a um, new line character, something like that. So whatever the string happens to be, you know, this is a number. And if I have a number, you know, I can, I can use the str function to turn a floating point number or an integer into a string, a string representation of that. All right, so if I had a variable called x, for example, I mean, str is literally, uh, you know, a, a uh, function. I could do something like this. All right. Okay. Finally, we need to close this, right? I need to sort of relinquish my control over it. So on our file object, we have a little call called close, right? So we open the thing, um, we read or write to and from it as required, and when we're all done, we close it. All right, that's basically what we're looking at. So like I said, these are kind of like input statements. These are kind of like print statements. Um, we just have to sort of surround it if you will, with this open and close. Now, open can fail. In other words, you can um, maybe have a disk that's full. If you're trying to open a, a file for read, it might not exist. You know, you might have the wrong path or something like that. And I will warn you that this, this is all about um, console operations. So you're not going to get a fancy dialog box that opens up that you can, you know, rummage through. You're going to have to put down the fully qualified path name. All right, so let's take a look at an example of uh, how we might use this. It turns out, hopefully, to be a little bit easier than you might think. Okay, so I'm going to grab an old program that we did uh, a few videos back that created a table. Right? We were looking at loops at the time that created a table to show what happens you know, with, with voltage and resistance as far as current and power and so forth and so forth. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that in here. Okay, so here's our program. Up top here is the original. So you might recall, we asked for a resistor value, we printed out a heading, we ran through this little for loop here, voltage started at 10, worked up to 20 in 2 volt increments, we calculated the current and the power, printed them out in this nice little format, so we had three columns for voltage, current, and power. This is our new file version of it. So what do we have here? Well, the very first thing we need to do is obtain the file name, right? The disk-based file name. So we ask for that. Um, notice that we say, otherwise, just press enter. In other words, don't give me a file name. So we're going to make this optional. Right? I don't want a file name. I, I, I don't want a file. I'm just happy with, uh, you know, what I have over here. So what ends up happening is um, if they just hit enter, then the F name comes back as null. In other words, there's no name. So we check that immediately. If F name is not the same as null. If it is the same as null, we don't do any of this. We're just done with the program. But if they have typed in something, a file name, then we come through here. And the first thing we do is we try to open that file, right? We open F name, that string that contains the, uh, the path, right? We're going to open this in write mode. We get back the file object if everything goes well. And then the first thing we do is we write out the heading. So you'll notice that this line up here is basically replicated perfectly over here. You can't quite see this because it's off the end. But notice that there are two new lines here rather than just one up here. Why is that the case? Well, that's the case because... If you just keep banging out these file writes, it's 
can I have line after line after line going across the page like this? I'm just going to end up with one line. You know, a print statement automatically sort of inserts a, um, a new line at the end. So that doesn't happen on the console over here. Uh, so you have to put those in manually when you're going to do the file right. In any case, we come down to our loop. And you'll notice this loop is identical to this loop, except once again, instead of having the print statement, we have a file right. But otherwise, pretty much the same thing. Okay. Do note I had to manually throw in, once again, a new line character. All right. Okay. Otherwise than that, this is awful lot like this. Okay. So let's give this a shot. I'll throw in 220 ohms. And there's my table. Okay, so I want to copy this to a file. Now, I already have in my computer a uh, uh, flash drive. It's my G drive. So I'm just going to call this you know, table.txt. And, you know, nothing really happens, right, that you can see. But, in fact, that file has been written. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a little text editor and see what this table looks like. Okay. Okay, so here's our table.txt file opened up in a text editor. And you can see that it is functionally identical, right? I mean, here's the table. Exactly as we did it, you know, we printed it out, the spacing, it's pretty much all there. Right. So I now have a text version of my original data table. And now I can take this, copy it into uh, a word processor or, you know, whatever it is that I, I uh, want to use to, you know, to analyze this, to, to archive it, whatever I happen to need. Okay. All right. So that's the basic idea behind using file commands. So to reiterate, we need to open, in other words, gain access. Then we can either read or write to and from the file, right, using the uh, write and uh, read or read line uh, uh, member functions. And then once we're all done, we close the thing. Okay, and that's just basically what you're doing with these sort of human readable text based files. Okay. All right. See you next time.